everybody. It's TR, and as promised, I'm going to do a review of this new budget priced Kramer Striker. Mine's been modified. I'll let you know what I've done to it, but I will also let you know what my opinion of the original parts were. Obviously, probably not the best, which is why it's been modified. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so here's um, Kramer's latest budget offering. Now, there is the Beretta Special out there that originally started at 179 bucks. Now they're going for a little over two that are amazing for the money and a great value. These, sorry to say, not so much. Um, it has an actual Floyd Rose special on it. And I think that's where part of the problem lies is this like $100, $120 trim all by itself. This is a $350 guitar. So there you go. Um, the country of origin, not so much country, but factory, which is more important. Of the Beretta special is Indonesia. This is made in China. So neck is totally different, totally different profile. This is a very C-shaped neck. Um, is it fendery? Maybe. Um, not really even more so C. More C than the fender, more round. The frets, supposed to be medium jumbo. I don't think they're that super big, but then again, they're the same size that they are on my Epiphone Les Pauls. So they are adequate. The fret work was nice. The edges were smooth. Okay, uh, let's start at the top. The tuners were okay, okay. They weren't good, they were okay. I replaced mine with my usual low-end Godos that work beautifully. Less of an issue that the tuners work good because there is the locking nut. And that's also Floyd Rose. I put string retrainer on mine. For the record, it didn't need it. See, the reason you need that on some guitars is that when you lock down the locking nut, it pushes the strings down, making it drastically be tuned different than what you have tuned it with your tuners. So then when you lock the nut, you have a lot of work on your fine tuner. This didn't do that. There's enough of a neck angle. It really wasn't a problem, but I had this retainer. I wanted to use it. It does make it more stable and I'll be honest, it looks cool, right? Does it look cool? It looks cool. So I put it on there. Obviously that maple fingerboard, it's a separate board. You see there's no skunk stripe. Uh, 24 frets. This is good. So far, pretty good. The finish on this is beautiful. That red color. Look at that. Love that. Um, screws on the plates back here are tiny, tiny. I haven't replaced those yet. I want to. Um, I don't plan on opening her up for too much maintenance, but man, them screws are chintzy. Uh, the Floyd Rose was good with the, the brass block and everything. This is your basic Floyd Rose special. If you ordered a Floyd Rose special, it even says special on it. This is what you'd get. Um, Floyd Rose special are plagued by the bar. Um, coming loose and flopping all over and you tighten it down and it comes loose and flops and it just keeps happening. So thanks to my buddy Adam of Adam's Cheap Guitars put me onto these uh, push-in replacements. What I was doing instead of the push-ins, I was buying the German bars, which are about 27 to 30, depending on if you got chrome or black. And of course they work great because they're the German part and they hold it in place just like it's supposed to because there's a little bit of a different system. But the push-in, is a $17 part and because of the way the collar works it does the job just fine it holds it where you put it there's a tension screw that you can adjust so for slightly more than half the price of the German arm I'm accomplishing the same thing I'm a happy camper okay pots dime size pots they were very poor pots why do I say they were poor just because they were dime size they were quiet they worked okay that way, but I decided I wanted to replace them. 
I was pretty sure the knobs wouldn't fit on the CTS pots, which by the way, these are Proline CTS pots that I put in, they're low friction. Pretty sure they wouldn't fit. What was gonna try them anyways, and you have to take the knob off to take the pot out anyhow, because that's where the nut is. I tried to take the knob off, the whole shaft pulled out of the pot on both of them. I just don't want both of them. Tore the pot right apart trying to pull the knob off the shaft. That shouldn't be, they're not push-pull, by the way. <laughs> they are now. Um, the switch I put in, it was a box switch. I hate them. This is a Fender 5-way. This thing was only like 12 bucks at Guitar Center, this switch. These pots, too, were each only like 6 or 7 bucks. And if you got the chops to do the soldering, I mean, it's a cheap upgrade, and it's well worth doing it. Pickups. I will show you those. I'll cut away and show some pictures of the original pickups. Humbucker. Um, it's an Alnico 5, and the ones that came on the Breda Specials were really good. They sounded good, and I think this is the same pickup. It sounded good, it was a Zebra. Um, the reason I got another one is I figured as long as I was replacing the neck and middle, I would replace that one too, because I didn't like the way the cream looked with the red. I know that's kind of a look, but I didn't want that. Cosmetic is a silly reason to replace a pickup, but I bought these at Guitar Fetish, and when you're spending $25 for a pickup, cosmetic can be a justifiable reason to replace a pickup. I don't know about it, 100 bucks for a Duncan or, or DiMarzio, but for a GFS $25 pickup, which by the way, full disclosure, this is a 35 because it is extra hot. Yeah, VEH, vintage extra hot. I'll spit it out eventually. Um, supposed to be EVH, like Eddie Van Halen, but vintage extra hot, VEH. And it is good. It, it sounds quite a bit like the, the um, Van Halen pickups too. And how do I know what they sound like? Well, I've got a EVH guitar that has one in it. Uh, neck and middle pickup were pretty cheap. They were billed as Alnico. I think one was, one wasn't. I'll show you in the pictures because as you can see, one of them, the magnets are actually the pull pieces. The other one has these two bar magnets, one on each side, which screams to me ceramic. The middle pickup just felt and looked cheaper than the neck. They sounded kind of all right, but I decided this needs to be a metal machine. So I got these railed little killers from Guitar Fetish, 25 bucks a pop. And as I said, I was gonna go for the $25 Crunchy Pat, but I went for the um, Vintage Extra Hot. And I like the way they sound. I mean. So I'll give you a little taste of the, of the neck pickup. Then of course that's not this guitar, that is the pickups I put in it. So I'm sorry I cannot show you the ones that came in it. I will get criticism. Oh, well, you should have reviewed it before you did all the work to it. Well, I didn't like the way it was, so that's why I did the work to it. Okay, a uh, couple of issues. Adam had an issue with his with the radius of the Floyd Rose not matching the neck. I don't seem to have that. Um, I set my string action on the both E strings, first and sixth, and then measured it against the other strings, and I have consistent action all the way across on the upper frets, so I'm not sure. Uh, but the problem I had is, in order to get the string action where I wanted it, this is a recessed bridge, uh, a Floyd. I had to drop it almost bottoming out inside the cavity, like it disappeared into the hole to get the action where I wanted it. So I had to shim the neck to get it to play like I want. I like just a little teeny bit on the base side to stick up above the body, and a little teeny bit to either be below the body or even with on the treble side. There again, that said, I blocked my trim so it goes down only, a la Eddie. I don't like a floating trim. I like the stiffer feel. I like a little tension back against the strings when I do the bends. So, you know, 
know, when I do stuff like that, I like the stiffer feel. So that's, that's personal preference. It works good. It stayed in tune when I got it and set it up originally before I blocked it when it floated. It works really, really well. People will bash uh, Floyd Rose Specials. And from my understanding, from the research I've done, although people will say different, they're made in Korea. The 1000 series are made in Korea with the same metal that the German ones are made out of. People will say the German ones have better metal than the thousands. You can fight that one out in the comments, but everything I read says they're the exact same metal, exact same specs made in a different country. These, however, are the ones made with a pot metal, a softer metal. So if you are going to keep this floating and use it a lot, I would say with a lot of use, your knife edges are probably going to get worn and it's not going to hold tune good. I don't know, that's speculation. But it's not an issue if you're down only. You tighten the springs down only. You'll come back to zero every time because the springs are slapping it right back there. And that is what I love. <laughs> And that's why I do it. So all in all, out of the box as it is, I don't know if, if for 350, if you could afford it, I put an extra couple hundred into this. And if you just spend that extra couple hundred, you can get something that'll play good out of the box. I didn't do this to save money. I did this to make it the way I wanted it. I like working on these things. And I got it as something to make what I wanted it to be. And that's what it is. That's why the rail pickups and everything. Like these can be split. I didn't make them split. I don't want them to split. This, this is for metal. Yeah, that's how that goes, right? I heard that in that neck pickup. <laughs> Anyways. So my thoughts on it are it's okay. For 350, you get what you pay for and it's okay. But if you want it to be a serious guitar that like you could gig with and count on and stuff, you might want to change a couple parts on it. That's my take on these. The review is it's okay. If you do what I did to it, it's awesome. <laughs> Yeah.